Hi everyone. Back in late November, I livestreamed an interview with Hubert Mosca, the creator and current game director of SCP Secret Laboratory. After a long wait, I've edited down all the important questions I had to ask him. There's some interesting answers in here, so I hope you learn something new and enjoy. Uh, let's see, what would be a good introductory question? You know what, Hubert, what is your favorite food? <laughs> What is my favorite food? Holy, that is a very difficult question because I, my tastes kind of sw like you know shift from time to time. I generally like Italian food, like the authentic Italian food. Mm -hmm. So like the actual uh, Italian pizza, not the American kind, <laughs> and stuff like that. But honestly, my tastes kind of shift. Okay. I know, it, liking pizza is like the most basic response that you can get from a human being, but I guess I'm simple. We do all like a good pizza. So, what would you say is your all-time favorite update to SCPSL? Just like, what, what would you say is the best one? Huh. I don't know what's the best one in general. I can say that I enjoyed working on Parabellum the most, I believe. The most impactful one is probably Mimicry, in my opinion, where we reworked some of the core mechanics and fixed some of the core game issues. Not all of them, obviously, it's still an ongoing process, but I feel like the Mimicry is most impactful with Parabellum. These probably are my, my two favorites. How would you say current development is going of SCPSL? Is, is development, like, going okay? Like, is there any speed bumps you guys are running into right now, or is it just smooth sailing, really? So with the recent major updates, again, like Parabellum Mimicry and Refracted Real Reality uh, a year ago, we have pretty much managed to fix some of the uh, issues that we've been struggling with, like the technical issues, the technical limitations. So right now, I don't really believe we have any specific challenges. At this point, it's honestly, we have so many features that we want to implement and not enough time <laughs> to do uh -huh. that. So, no, I wouldn't say there are any, like, issues with or any obstacles that we need to solve before we can do anything that we want with the game. What would you say your favorite, like, part of the game is? Basically, what I'm trying to say is, like, what what do you have most fun with in SCPSL? Huh, good question. <laughs> I haven't really thought about it, but I would say I generally like the gunplay in general. Um... I don't want to say it's the favorite part or the best part, but I feel like the actual, my favorite class to play as as right now is probably MTF. I actually actually genuinely enjoy just uh, fighting the SCPs, going for cool tricks, trying to gun them down, juke them, and and so on. So I would say that this is the most enjoyable part of the game for me. The mid game where you actually respawn as the MTF or you escape as a scientist or get escorted as D class or whatever and you actually uh, get to the part that many people actually don't really like. I, I'm not really sure what is the people's opinion on that, but I know that not everyone likes uh, fighting the SCPs, that many people complain that the late game is a bit boring, which is something that we're also working on, but honestly, at that point, it's probably my favorite part. Honestly, I would say that uh, finding SCPs is probably my favorite part. I find it more enjoyable than PvP. I mean, PvP can be cool because it's more rare, of course, but... Um, PvP has probably... some essential issues that make it frustrating in many ways. Doesn't mean that I don't like it. Uh, it just means that there are some issues, but in general, I do prefer uh, fighting against SCPs. I used to like playing as a scientist. This kind of shifted for no particular reason. Maybe after the guns rework. I don't know when exactly, but I remember that I was that scientist used to be my favorite class. Then it kind of shifted to MTF. How much stuff has Northwood made for the game that just went completely unused? How straight to the point do you want me to get with that answer? G going a little off topic could help you to give you a little bit of context, but I'm not sure if that's something that you would want. Oh, go ahead. Just say what you need to say. So, in general, nowadays we have robust enough system to prevent issues like that from happening, where we invest a lot of resources and time into features that never make it into the public. Uh, this is lesson that we have learned from the past mistakes. For example, right now, the, the general way of developing stuff is that we have game designers which write ideas, uh, brainstorm them, and effectively, I don't want to say that this is almost like a scientific method because it's probably, it's, it's very far from it, but effectively, 
it's the it's trying to achieve the same purpose. It's about a bunch of game designers trying to see all the all the flaws with a certain proposal that another designer has made, and we're trying to look for issues ahead of time before we even spend any development resources into it. And then if a feature is complex enough, like for example a new SCP or a, some feature that we're uncertain about, we will usually go for a cheap proof of concept, like a prototype, to just make sure that we like the idea and that it works. And at that point, most of the bad ideas just get thrown out. Uh, this hasn't been the case in the past. Like, for example, I think I can bring up Scopophobia, uh, <laughs> which was, it was so long ago that I don't think that bringing it up and admitting publicly that it was a mistake is going to be a huge PR issue for me. Uh, essentially, the development with Scopophobia worked in that way that game designers wrote a proposal, I approved it without any further consideration, we didn't, do, we didn't think too much about it, we just wanted to make it happen. And we went for all marketing materials, we made uh, trailers, public announcements, everything like that, and all of that happened happened before we had any sort of prototype in the game. And then when the first quote unquote prototype hit the market, which in that point was already, I believe, a patron or a public beta, that was the first time we actually tested the new SCP concept. It was during a patron or a public beta. And that is where we realized there are some very core issues that may not be resolvable. And we still haven't fully resolved them until now. Realistically, if 096 rework, uh, like the scope of phobia happened happen nowadays, we would again, and make a very small prototype, see that this has some flaws. For example, people keep staring at the floor all the time, or a boring gameplay where you just walk and hope that someone will look at your face as 096. And these would be, this would probably be the point where we would back up from that. And at that point, we have reached the point where 096 has as many lovers as many haters. Uh, and we are kind of in a difficult situation where removing it outright is going to have a lot of backlash and keeping in the game has some core issues that uh, we need resolving. So at the end of the day, we have kind of started working around it by adding things like SCP preferences. So if you don't like work, uh, playing as 096, you can just opt out of it. But realistically, uh, I have not answered your question yet what was the biggest thing that haven't been released honestly i don't know <laughs> no, no idea it was probably something from before the, the the game even released so i'm guessing you can't really you, you don't really have like a favorite piece of cut content that you can recall then there was an idea that didn't really get implemented past then uh, it, they had like a very small prototype that was character classes or like subclasses for, uh, I believe the, the, the prototype that I've made was class D, having a bunch of subclasses that you can choose from, like effectively character customization. And all of these uh, class Ds would have their backstories. So we had a thief class D, which spawned with a janitor keycard, but it had lower health. Or you had someone who is faster, but has lower uh, health. Or you have someone who moves slower, but has more health. And generally it's been scrapped because it's a it's like a huge pain to manage, to balance and, and keep it all fun. So we have effectively unified everything. So all character classes move at the same speed, jump at the same height and so on. This is an interesting concept that will likely not ever get implemented, except for maybe via plugins or stuff like like that but it's this kind of thing that sounds like a great idea that I kind of wish was in the game but all the drawbacks of this feature make it unfeasible as of right now and ever I believe <laughs> yeah I think I remember seeing in uh, some of the older versions of that I know uh, that's where uh, John Caloose came from the uh, D class mm -hmm. name. so that is the official name of the default D class and yeah and, and during the playtest we actually noticed that there was like only one meta character that everyone switched to and only played it. So at that point, maybe there is, I realize that maybe there is some core issue with the game that needs to be solved instead of adding character customization and letting people only pick the one character, which is the most OP. And the default character is only used by the people who don't know how to switch to the meta character. So uh, recently, SCPSL has gotten like pretty popular, I would say. I think it actually reached its like uh, highest player count recently in like the past few months. I was wondering, um, has that like put any pressure on you or Northwood? It has. Uh, we are trying to work on the game as normal while trying to react to that higher player count and everything. But at the end of the day, it all has its own inertia. We've had some changes to our teams and, and stuff like that. But before we can 
complete all the proper transformations and move on with the new pipelines, it still it always takes months. So uh, at the end of the day, you may not always see the instant response to new high scores in our either Patreon or Steam charts, but we are working in the background. It just has its inertia. But yeah, it, it does impact us. It, we do feel like we are more responsible now uh, for, for, for our players. The pressure is definitely there. <laughs> Uh, well, let's alleviate some of the pressure with a different type of question. What would you say your favorite video game is right now and your favorite video game of all time? Huh. Um, I used to play a lot of Space Engineers. Recently, I've been playing a lot of Cyberpunk with the release of Phantom Liberty and the 2.0 updates. And I gotta admit that this is probably my favorite game to just casually play during the day right now. I do enjoy playing uh, Secret Lab and I play a lot of Secret Lab, but obviously that doesn't count in this context. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and I that's pretty much it. I occasionally play Overwatch and CSGO or CS2 at that point. At that point, it's probably Space Engineers as my all-time favorite, where I usually have the most hours in, uh, aside from Secret Lab, and then Cyberpunk as my new recent favorite. What do you think are some things that, like, are a bit too powerful or a bit too underpowered? Just, like, it can be literally anything. Like, it could be a weapon attachment. <laughs> um... Are you trying to make me publicly admit that the Captain LMG is overpowered, or is it just... <laughs> I mean, you can, I didn't you can, say anything. You can, you can just ask directly, you don't have to go around this. Uh, yeah, uh, LMG is a bit overpowered, we have some rebalances in the works. Uh, at that point, we can assume that it is fine to be overpowered because this is balanced by scarcity. So it doesn't matter that there is an overpowered weapon if it's only a single weapon. And if MTF spawns in a group of 15s, then one weapon which is like 50% more powerful than any other weapon isn't going to be a big problem because there are still two other weapons that can that combined can have higher firepower. But obviously, people work around this issue and either complain that this weapon is too rare and want us to add more, but at the same time there is many people who just get this weapon from 914 in the early game and completely butcher, butcher everyone. And yeah, so there are some issues that require our attention. As of right now, personally, I do not feel the urge to fix the Captain LMG. I think for the time being, most of the complaints are overblown. It is true that it's a little too overpowered, but is it really an every round issue? I don't think so. Yeah, that it did seem like I was just asking about the LMG. If you're asking kind of about like... attachments, it's probably the laser side, which is difficult to balance, and pretty much everyone puts on it. If you're asking about things that are too weak, it's probably FSP9 and it's high recoil pattern. There are many things that are too weak or too overpowered, but none of that, I think, requires immediate attention. It's something that we'll be, it like, has been in the back burner and we've been kind of randomly changing things there and here. And yeah, I, I, I do not think that currently there is one issue that requires immediate attention. The game is overall pretty playable, pretty enjoyable. Okay. So I, I guess that actually actually leads pretty well into this next question. So would you say you're happy with like the current state of SL just like in general? Do you think there's like anything major holding the game back or? The main issues that we have is caused by the level design. That is my opinion. That is the thing that we are prioritizing. We have uh, level design teams uh, being set up and they are working on uh, trying to fix that issue. I truly believe that most of the game issues originate from game uh, from level design, not exactly from the fine tuning of small stats. Do you think we'll be getting more merch of SL in the future, like maybe shirts and hats, stuff like that? Or are you guys just sticking to the plushies for now? If you can even answer, I don't know if that's like really your thing, but... Uh... Actually, legally speaking, I don't believe I can answer it right now because there are some deals that are ongoing. But we are <laughs> we are indeed working on with certain companies uh, into potentially expanding our merchandise. That is all I'm allowed to say. I don't know if it's go if we're going to go through with it and actually end up having some merchandise. But yeah, we are looking towards expanding this uh, form of monetization because it's a very nice non-intrusive way of supporting development. Which I guess and people have something. We have something from it. It's a win-win overall. So it's been talked about in the past that uh, like monetization will be like in the game itself in some form do you have any idea on like what it could be or 
do you want to keep that like secret for now? I'm not going to go too much into specifics, but in our near future we'll be focusing on trying to expand our uh, Patreon by offering some more specific Patreon benefits. As of right now, we are also investigating the possibility of having in-game skins, which requires building up significant infrastructure and it's probably not coming anytime soon. But uh, yeah, that is, I believe, skins that are we probably we don't want to have any like pink rainbow skins or like any like flashy skins. I, I don't I don't even know how to describe them. You know, you know what I'm trying to say, right? We don't want any like super flashy skins everywhere, but uh, any like non-intrusive small things like that is something that we want to uh, expand towards. So it was teased a little bit while back that um experimental weapons uh, are going to be getting a rework. Uh, do you think this is going to be a full-on like 14.0 for example or do you think it's just going to be a patch for 13.0? It depends. Uh, the naming of our the naming convention of our patches is what we call regular updates and milestone updates. So like the 13.3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 these are all regular patches and we have the milestone patches like 12.0, 13.0, 14.0, and so on. So these, it all depends. Weapons on their own probably are not a milestone. This is a regular feature that we are reworking. But if, for example, we combine them with a bunch of other combat-related uh, reworks, we could call it a uh, combat rework update. And in this case, that's a milestone. So at the end of the day, because I, I do feel like uh, this is an upcoming question regarding the major updates. So how we haven't been, how 14.0 has not been, has not occurred yet. And it's been like a, almost a year since uh, Refracted Reality came out. Uh, but at the end of the day, the size of the update is strictly dictated by the amount of features in it. And at that point, we would rather release a couple of smaller and more regular updates with a with fewer features than waiting until we have something big and then just release it at once. People tend to also prefer having a more, more constant stream of new features rather than holding everything and not releasing it for a little while. Because like at that point, we are at 13 point, uh, Three, right or four? I, I'm actually uh, even yeah, even lost track. Point three currently. Yeah, all of those features that we had in 13.1 and two and three, they could all be combined together and released as a 14.0 quite easily. And we would have a new major update, but we just prefer to split it into three smaller updates so people have a more regular stream of new content. You um, you did explain earlier and uh, just in the past that you started SCPSL from you know playing the uh, Gmod uh, game mode, but uh, what got you into game development just in general? Well, I've always been into game development, honestly. Uh, I feel like ever since I was nine or ten at that point, I remember I used to steal my uh, older brother's notebooks. Uh, where he had like little HTML cheat codes and stuff like that. And I was like, quote unquote, programming in HTML. HTML is not really a programming language, but I was making my own uh, very simple websites and stuff like that. So I kind of always uh, was into programming. And when I was like 13 and I went to a new school, I met a friend who uh, was already interested in making games in Unity. He is, the, he is the responsible party of me choosing and sticking to Unity. I've been a Unity user since 2013, since I was like 12 or 13. I don't even remember how old I was back then. But that effectively, I've always been interested in programming. I thought it was pretty cool. And yeah. Could you like kind of walk me and everyone else watching through like what an update goes through in development? So like the different stages? So it kind of goes back to the one of the first questions that I answered. Um, we have the general game design stage where we discuss the ideas, try to uh, remove any, uh, try to detect any flaws and either work around them or, or fix them. But it all starts with a game designer having an idea or taking it from the community because we have the suggestions channel and so on. And whether it's a huge, a new SCP or it's a small quality of life feature, the procedures start with the same thing. It's about writing a proposal, sending it to game designers, discussing whether or not we like it. And then if they do like it, uh, it goes to individual dev heads, dev heads, aka development heads, uh, which are 
the managers of programming, art, audio, uh, quality assurance. Uh, am I missing someone? I am definitely am missing someone. I'm sorry if I'm missing someone. But <laughs> the managers of all development departments, and we are checking it for feasibility and direction. So if the proposal involves some new, I don't know, a new SCP, which will have to contain everything, new sounds, new uh, graphical assets, it needs to go through me as the game director to uh, for me to approve that this is a direction that we want to continue with our development. It needs to go to the audio manager to uh, decide whether or not uh, this is consistent, uh, this is feasible by our uh, audio managers. It needs to go to the programming manager to make sure our programmers are capable of implementing these features with our current technical uh, limitations. It needs to go to artists to make sure that they have time to implement all, this, all the assets. And that's pretty much it. And we also decide whether or not we want to have some prototypes, uh, what potential issues we can encounter and how we can fix them. And that is pretty much the way we implement everything. And if it's a smaller feature, like a small quality of life feature, for example, the new hotkey system, it just goes to programming and me because we just need to give the two approvals. It has no graphical assets, it has no audio assets. So the process is simplified, but it's effectively the same thing for every feature. Do you have any regrets on things you've like said or done in the game? I, I know you said, Scopophobia was uh, <laughs> something <laughs> not the best, but uh... I feel like Surface Zone shouldn't have been announced yet. <laughs> this is the Scopophobia and Surface Zone is the same mistake. It's about announcing our plans long before we have any prototypes or anything like that, and then never following up through that. We will eventually, but it looks kind of bad. Or, or the same thing, even with like human rework. But actually, no, human rework is different because we already had a few models completed. It's just we never ended up having a time to uh, prioritize it properly and there are always bigger issues that we wanted to resolve first and that is the main issue here. But I suppose Scopophobia is the biggest regret at that point. By no, by no means was it a failure. Uh, I feel like it still works pretty well. It's just the update that had more most things that could have been prevented. There, it has most issue, most pre preventable issues. But at the end of the day, pretty much every procedure that we have nowadays is caused by mistakes that we have made in the past. So if we haven't made those mistakes back then, we probably would have now. And yeah, and now we have bigger expectations from the community. So at that point, I don't believe I regret anything. <laughs> In the Halloween update post, uh, it was said that, you know, Northwood was thinking on if they wanted to make 3114 a permanent feature or not. Have you guys come to a conclusion on what you want with 3114? Uh, surprise, surprise, people really love 3114. We have just completed our feedback forums and it's overwhelmingly positive feedback towards people wanting to keep 3114 in the game. So... At that point, we don't really have much choice. Uh, there are some adjustments that we would like to do. There were certain corners that have been cut because of Halloween, and we didn't expect it to be that positive. We knew that people would like it because it's a new SCP in a couple of years. It's just, you know, we were like, oh, it's just for Halloween, so we don't have to worry about that, or we don't have to do this, and, and so on. And now these issues will probably be multiplied if we just re-enable it. So before we re-enable 3114, there are a few adjustments that require our attention. I, I think it's okay for me to reveal that uh, it's currently being worked on by game designers and a few proposals were already posted. So right now we're looking towards re-enabling 3114 uh, in the base game with some adjustments made. And I don't know what's going to be the future of it. There might be some <laughs> rework in the future. But the, the funny story is that 3114 was not meant to be the first SCP that we introduced. There are a couple of other proposals that we had in the past, which are kind of stuck in the prototype phase. I mean, never really gone through any prototype tests. We have a few uh, concept of, of new playable SCPs for which we've made prototypes and decided that is not the way to go because it's so unfeasible. But right now, 3114, we are looking towards permanent implementation because people just like it. With like some of the updates, there's been like a year gap between them, like Parabellum, you know, Mimicry. So I'm guessing you guys are planning on moving into more of a like constant but admittedly like little bit lower content form of releasing updates right 
there are going to be updates that are not separatable. So like, for example, Mimicry. Uh, I mean, actually Mimicry, we could have released... Uh, no, actually we couldn't. Mimicry had uh, had us rework the old character management system, which means we couldn't have just to rework one SCP and release the refactored version of it one at a time in, a, in each update. So we had to effectively pause the release uh, of any other updates rework all of the classes in the game and then release them all at once. That was the smallest possible unit that we could have contained it in and it happened to be a major update because these features were big enough. Same deal with Refracted Reality. We couldn't have just, I don't know, ported one zone into the new engine and keep the rest of the game in the old engine and just release it uh, partially. So we had to rework everything and then release it all at once. Also Parabellum, where we rework all the guns, we don't want to have one gun using one mechanic and another gun using the old mechanics. So again, the smallest possible unit of releasing uh, Parabellum was Parabellum. We probably could have separated 173 out of it, but it just aligned perfectly because Paraboom was art heavy on the weapons, so we had to wait for artists to complete the weapons, so we had some extra programming time to implement the 173. That's pretty much the way we release uh, milestone updates. It may, be, may just align that we have a lot of features that we just coincidentally finish at the same time and we decide to release it as a 14.0, uh, or there could be another feature that is just big enough on its own to be a milestone update like i don't know the surface zone rework because i can't imagine just reworking half the surface right <laughs> so so that is how we do milestone updates and regular updates i know that people don't see it this way but i really wish people saw them at an equal level because pretty much there are it's just a feature a system that's been reworked or added and yeah if you're able to tell like, like you said earlier, there, there's some updates that, you know, you've said that, that will come and uh, it's been a little bit since then. Have any of them fallen like out of priority? These updates, you still plan on working on them eventually, right? Like the surface zone, for example, the human model rework. Yeah, there is surface zone human uh, rework. We had the entrance zone rework as well planned. Experimental weapons kind of went into the back burner because we have a little project that we would probably want to push beforehand, uh, but we are working still on them. Uh, we don't want like the experimental weapons to end up as uh, any other project, but realistically, this kind of comes back to what I said at the very beginning. We have too many things that we want to implement and too little development time. We probably should have, we, we need to properly expand, we need to have more programmers and, and, and stuff like that. We, uh, which is one of the reasons why monetization is probably going to be like the near future expansion of our patron roles. I believe it should give us sufficient resources to uh, hire way more programmers and have them implement these features uh, more effectively. Thank you for watching this part of the interview where I asked Hubert my questions. There's a second part where I asked Hubert questions from my community, so if you'd like to see that, then please show this video support so I know to start working on editing that down. Thank you again, and have a nice day.